have here today? This is the second grade, right? Oh, I see Sandra and Patrick, and there's Sophia. And here's our Liam. Liam has done all his homework. What a good guy. And then we have Olivia and Shannon. What pretty names. I'm so glad you could all make it today. Are you ready to learn about the sacraments? This is kind of like New Year, new start for us, okay? First of all, I have a little welcome for you. It says, this is a special time for you and your family. You are taking one more step on your journey with Jesus. This will help you as you prepare to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation for the first time. Now, reconciliation is also sometimes called the Sacrament of Penance, and we also call it Confession. Are you, all right, you're going to learn how much God loves you, and you'll practice choices and actions that show your love for God and others. You will come to know that God is merciful and forgiving. Even when people turn away from God's love, he is always ready to welcome them back. The Sacrament of Reconciliation celebrates God's love, forgiveness, and mercy. Are you getting excited? I hope so. It says, many people in our parish will be praying for you as you prepare to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation for the first time. You're surrounded by a whole community who can show you how to live in God's love. And may God bless you and keep you close. And we are going to begin our journey of preparing for the two sacraments that you will receive this year for the first time. It's a great time. And it's a family time because you want to get mommy and daddy involved in it. You want them to talk to you and tell you about when they made their first communion or the first time they went to confession. It's really a celebration. And we're going to start off with a little story about some kids who were on a bus trip. It says, everyone is here. It was time to return to the school. The field trip to the science center was over. Have you gotten to go on field trips? Maybe when you were in kindergarten or first grade? I hope so. They're always fun. Mrs. Wilton counted each child on the bus. 22, 23, 24. Oh, everyone is here. Let's go, she said to the bus driver. Why do you count everyone, asked Patrick. I don't want to leave anyone behind, answered Mrs. Wilson. I care about you too much. That's nice, isn't it, to have the teacher care about you so much. All right, now I'm going to read you a story called The Lost Sheep. And look who I have here. I have Jesus, the Good Shepherd. This is one of my favorite statues. And we see Jesus here with a, a stick that he holds. Um, this is the same idea of the stick that a bishop or the pope would carry. Theirs are fancy. They might have gold on them or jewels. This is just a stick because shepherds were people who did not have a lot of money and they worked out in the field, and they just carried a stick to help them along the way. And then we see the Good Shepherd holding a lamb, and we have another lamb down here and a full-grown sheep, and we're going to read about that. It says, everyone wants to be loved and cared for. Jesus wanted people to understand how much God loves them. Jesus thought of a way to help people know about God's love. He told a simple story about a shepherd and a lost sheep. 
and here's the story that Jesus told. If any of you has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will you do? Won't you leave the 99 in the field and go look for the lost sheep until you find it? And when you find it, you will be so glad that you will put it on your shoulder and carry it home. All right. Then you will call in your friends and neighbors and say, let's celebrate. I found my lost sheep. Now that is a reading from the Bible, okay? The story of the lost sheep. The people listened to Jesus' story with great interest. They understood the words of Jesus. God is like the shepherds who cares for every sheep in the flock. God watches over all people. Because remember, we are all children of God. God loves them and cares for them, even when they wander away like a lost sheep. Even when they turn away from his love, God continues to love his people. And that happens a lot. Sometimes people have trouble in their life and they turn their back on God. But God is always there waiting with open arms to bring us back. He's waiting because he never stops loving us, even if we do bad stuff. When we go to confession, as long as we're sorry and really mean it, God forgives our sins. And we're going to be talking about that a lot in the next couple of weeks, because it's all leading up to you getting to make your first confession. All right, let's move on a little bit and I'm going to have a little part here where it says God saves. The Bible also tells the story of Adam and Eve, the first people. They chose to turn away from God's love. They wandered away like the sheep in Jesus' story. The choice of Adam and Eve to say no to God is called original sin. Because of this choice, sadness, suffering, and death came into God's good creation. That first sin is not only lost original holiness for Adam and Eve, but for all humankind as well. Remember, this is the very first man and the very first woman. There are no other people at this time and they said no to Jesus by their actions. But it had a long, long, long reaching effect on everybody. We're all born with original sin on our souls. It says, God did not give up on his people. God our Father sent his son Jesus into the world to save all people. Jesus gave his life to bring all people back to God's love. Jesus' sacrifice made it possible for us to have eternal life with God. The name Jesus means God saves. Now when I say eternal life, after we die, and hopefully we've been good people, we go up to heaven. And we can live there for all eternity. That means forever and ever and ever and ever. There's no end to it. See, we're all here on earth for a certain length of time. Some people it's a long time, some people it's a short time. But that's only a little tiny like microcosm of what life is like. Because just as Jesus died and rose again, we will die and rise up into heaven. Do you understand that? Our real home is going to be in heaven, where we spend the whole rest of time, which never ends. And that's what eternity is. 
And we can do that because God forgives. God saves. All right, now we're going to look at something. I told you we're going to learn about two sacraments that you'll receive for the first time this year. And both of them are sacraments that you can receive over and over and over throughout your life. But here's one that you only receive once. And you received it either when you were a little baby or when you got a little bit older. And it's called baptism. It says in the sacrament of baptism, the church celebrates this saving love of God. Baptism takes away original sin. Baptism gives people new life with God. This new life is called grace. Grace is God's own life and love alive in you. In baptism, you become a follower of Jesus and a member of the church. You are marked as God's own child forever. In the sacrament of reconciliation, you renew your baptism. Any sins committed after baptism are forgiven. So you've received baptism, you're working towards reconciliation, and remember the other names, penance, confession, okay, all the same. So you'll receive your second and your third sacraments this year because after you receive reconciliation, you're going to receive First Communion. This is a wonderful year for you and your family. You know, everybody here at St. John's is wishing you well. From Father Tom to the people in the choir and the people who help clean up the yard and the people who take up the collections, everybody is rooting for our First Communion kids for this year. And it's a happy time. It's a good time to really think about how to be the best boy or girl you can be. And we're going to go on each week for eight weeks going over reconciliation until it's time for you to actually make it. And this is going to be a special, special year for all of you. I hope to see you again next week. And I wish you the very best. And God bless to each and every one of you. Bye-bye.